61 News at 10 starts now. Right now at 10, the nation honors the victims of Sandy Hook. We'll see how our country is remembering those killed in Newtown nearly 10 years ago. Also breaking news tonight as a man is found guilty of murder more than four years after another man's death. We'll hear what happened inside court. And new details about the gruesome killing of a Connecticut mother. What investigators are saying about the man accused of killing her. We begin at 10 with the nation honoring the 26 victims killed in the Sandy Hook school shooting. Hello, I'm Jen Bernstein. I'm Ben Goldman. Thanks for joining us here. Next Wednesday marks 10 years since the massacre at the school in Newtown. Fox 61's Gabby Molina joining us in studio tonight to tell us more about tonight's tribute at the nation's capital. Gabby. The National Vigil for All Victims of Gun Violence is led by the Newtown Action Alliance. It takes place every year in Washington, D.C., not only rem to remember the lives lost in Newtown 10 years ago, but all of the lives lost to gun violence. The last 10 years have not been easy, but living my life honoring the victims has helped. 17-year-old Jackie Haggerty was in second grade at Sandy Hook Elementary School on December 14, 2012, a survivor of the school shooting that took place that day. She shared her story at the National Vigil for All Victims of Gun Violence in Washington, D.C., Wednesday evening. It was impossible to imagine that 26 innocent lives were killed in the same building I was in. There were moments in that classroom where I sat, worrying that I would die. That day I survived because the shooter armed with an AR-15 chose the left instead of right in that hallway. Ten years later, she's the co-leader of the Junior Newtown Action Alliance, a group of young people wanting to create change so that no other children face what they have. For the last decade, our childhood has been stolen by gun violence. Guns are now the number one killer of children in America. Haggerty introduced President Joe Biden at the vigil, the first time a U.S. president has spoken at the annual event. Then Vice President Biden came to Connecticut after the tragedy. It was astounding to see, even then, the courage that was represented. Jill and I met with you, prayed with you, and have worked with you. We've seen you turn pain into purpose. Wednesday's vigil, an example of that purpose, as advocates from Connecticut and all over the country came together to call for action to end gun violence. It brings us together to remember and to pledge that we will never forget, never forget, all of those victims, all of the survivors, all of the loved ones, who give us the strength to continue this fight. This year, the most significant gun restrictions in 30 years were passed, but the president and other advocates have called for more restrictions to address gun violence, including a ban on assault weapons. In the studio, Gabby Molina, Fox 61 News. Gabby, thank you. And next Wednesday, as we said, will mark 10 years since that massacre that shook Connecticut and the country to its core. But the people of Newtown have remained resilient through the pain and anguish. Next week, we're going to take a look at where the Newtown community has been and where it is today. We honor the 26 lives taken too soon and pay tribute to their memories. Fox 61 presents Sandy Hook Strong 10 years later, Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here on Fox 61 and streaming on Fox 61 Plus. Want to move along tonight and get a check of the weather here? A first check on the Weather Watch. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now. Hi, Rachel. Hi. We'll finally get to see the sunshine come out tomorrow and Friday, too. So we get a couple of days. The rain has moved on. We are still seeing areas of fog. This is from earlier today. Matt Scott and Guilford kind of capturing that lower visibility. The good news is while it is still foggy outside right now, as of 10 o'clock at night in southern and southeastern Connecticut, that fog is in the process of lifting. So it will not be an issue by the time you head out the door tomorrow morning. Meantime, it is still crazy warm out there. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 50s. It feels balmy and not at all like you'd expect it to feel for December 7th. Heading through the next 12 hours, you'll see temperatures dropping back into the 40s. So the low temperature tonight will actually be above the average high temperature for this time of year to give you some context. Otherwise, we're looking at high temperatures tomorrow that will climb up around the 50 degree mark. Lots of sunshine tomorrow, a little bit breezy, but it's tough to complain about a day like this in December. We'll talk about our next chance for precipitation, maybe even a little bit of snow, maybe a little mood snow to get us in the mood for the holidays. We'll explain coming up. 
See you shortly, Rachel. Thank you. Meanwhile, we're following breaking news tonight as a man from Bloomfield is convicted in a murder in Hartford more than four years ago. Fox 61's Brent Harden joins us in the breaking news center with what happened in Hartford Superior Court. Brent. Uh, Jen Ben Hartford State's attorney says 46-year-old Demond Bester was convicted today in the murder of 53-year-old William Smalls. Back in June of 2018, Smalls was shot several times in the head, neck, chest, and arm. He was found dead inside a car on North Canaan Street near Euclid Street West. Investigators say gunshot residue was found on Bester's clothing, and witnesses and cell phone records also tied him to the murder. Bester is scheduled to be sentenced on February 10th. In the Breaking News Center, I'm Brent Harden. Jen, Ben, back to you. All right, Brent, thank you. We're also following breaking news in the south end of Hartford tonight, where police are investigating after a crash sent a bicycle rider to the hospital. Officers say that the car hit the bike on New Britain Avenue near Cumberland Street just after 8.30 tonight. The man riding the bike is in critical condition. The driver stayed at the scene. We'll bring you updates on this breaking news as soon as we get them. New details at 10 tonight in the case of a Roxbury man accused of killing his ex-girlfriend with an axe in Milford. 42-year-old Ewan Dewitt was arrested shortly after in West Haven. He's facing several charges, including murder and the death of 40-year-old Julie Minogue. Fox 61's Tony Black joins us live in Milford with the new details and what we've learned tonight. Tony. Yeah, Ben and Jen, the child of that mur mother murdered here at this Milford condo complex Tuesday night was there and witnessed parts of it. And tonight we're getting new details about what happened in this case, and we want to warn you that parts of it are very hard to hear. 40-year-old mother Julie Minoke was murdered inside her Milford home Tuesday night. The man accused of her murder, her ex-boyfriend Ewan DeWitt, appeared in court Wednesday. The probable cause statement for the Roxbury man lays out what happened Tuesday. The 17-year-old son of the victim called police to report his mother was being assaulted with an axe. He woke up to screams, walked downstairs, and saw DeWitt holding the weapon, his mother on the floor. He ran upstairs and called 911. Ring video provided by a neighbor shows a man walking past their home holding an axe that matches the video police describe. Police responded to the home and found Minoke lying on the kitchen floor with multiple critical lacerations to her face and skull. A large axe was found on the stove. Minoke's three-year-old son was on the living room couch in shock, not crying or responding to police presence. When Milford police first arrived, the teen was upstairs and jumped out the window out of fear it was DeWitt imitating police. The probable cause statement says the suspect's mother later called police because DeWitt called her, saying he killed his girlfriend and wanted to kill himself. Police were able to make contact with DeWitt, but he hung up on them. Officers then began canvassing and went to the dive bar in West Haven, about a mile from where the incident happened. They were later flagged down by two men there, saying they saw a person matching the suspect's description. One of those men telling Fox 61 the person was wandering around the parking lot and then went into this food truck next door. That's where DeWitt was taken into custody. Records show the mother had two protective orders against her ex-boyfriend for previous domestic violence incidents. One of them was entered on December 1st. In a November affidavit from Minoke, she said she feared DeWitt would kill her after sending more than 200 harassing text messages to her. Now DeWitt is charged with murder and also one count for each violation of a protective order and violation of a restraining order among other charges. Attorneys on both sides in court today citing mental health concerns with DeWitt. He's being held on a $5 million bond and also a quick note, the sister of Julie started a GoFundMe for her three boys. So far it's already raised $9,000. Live in Milford, Tony Black, Fox 61 News. Tony, thank you. As Connecticut gets ready for the recreational sale of marijuana, Cannabis business leaders met today to talk about the industry's future here in our state. More than 250 people were at the Hartford Club for the Together We Grow event. Discussion panels touched on topics like building, growing, and banking when it comes to the cannabis industry. This industry, it's sort of like building the airplane while you're flying it. And uh, so they're really learning um, a lot in a short amount of time, but they have um, a lot of different issues to triage. And I, they've already got a running list of things to address. Uh, I'm sure that list will grow and it will be a work in progress. State leaders originally hoped recreational sales would begin by the end of the year, but they're now expected to begin in three or four months' time. Part of the rollout of legal marijuana in Connecticut has been to erase the low-level possession convictions for tens of thousands of people, but they're going to have to wait longer than expected. The clean slate law was supposed to go into effect on January 1st, but it was announced today that it may take until late 2023. 
The Office of Policy and Management says the delay is due to technical challenges involving data. State Senator Gary Winfield wants those who are impacted to know that work is still being done to ensure the Clean Slate Bill will be implemented as soon as possible. Look, I live around some folks who um, have been some of the most stand-up people in the community. But maybe 20, 30 years ago, they did something. And somebody got a piece of paper and found out about that thing and think they know who that person is. And what I can tell you is that piece of paper does not reflect who that person is now. It doesn't reflect who they were 10 years ago. And you can't see it. And so people think they are doing the right thing by not giving them housing, by not giving them a job, by not giving them a chance. But they're doing exactly the wrong thing. Advocates say they're going to ask for a clean slate implementation office to be established this year to ensure a thorough implementation strategy moving forward.